means I first became involved in the fire service. I come from a family of uh, uh, where everybody was in the fire service. Uh, my, my father was in it, my brother, and I, and I first joined in uh, 1962 up in Pennsylvania in a little town called Lakemont. So I got my background there and it was into my system and I was hooked after that. Uh, when I moved to West Virginia, uh, I was working for AT&T and uh, one of my co-workers, uh, Lewis Alban, was assistant chief at the fire company here in Charlestown. He says, we have a great organization. Come join us. Come be part of our team at Independent. So that's how I got here. I joined uh, Independent in January 24th, 1974. So I have a few years here with the fire company. And a, a lot of changes happened over those years. It's been very interesting. We started in the old station down on uh, George Street. Uh, where we backed everything in very carefully and if, if you were too far away from the, the wall you had to change and move in. Your mirror literally had to be touching the wall in order to get the equipment in. Uh, at that stage uh, we were in a period where we uh, we bounced around. We, did, we didn't whether we'd have enough money to pay the bills each month. We'd pay uh, basically bingo and tick out of one and uh, th that would be the bill we'd pay some months. Things have changed quite a bit since then. Then again back then our bills were only a thousand dollars a month versus twenty-five or thirty thousand today, so it's a big change. Uh, thank goodness for the support of the community. Uh, other things we've seen happen since that time was uh, uh, we we started out at that stage. We we bought all large uh, firefighting coats and boots because anyone could fit into a large one. Where uh, today everything's custom fitted and uh, everyone has exactly the right size. Uh, the the big event is. Uh, along with this is uh, everything's a lot safer now. Everyone has their own gear. Everyone has uh, protection that's going to keep them from getting burnt and whatever. So that's that's a big change. One of the first uh, big events that happened when I joined was uh, almost a year later, January 28, 1975. Uh, we had a firefighter fatality. Uh, it's an event that stick in my mind forever. Uh, Raymond Huffnagel uh, went to a floor uh, at a fire at Miller Chemical. Uh, myself and a couple others had walked across that floor minutes, just minutes, before he went through. We were actually down on the level where he fell to, and, and we, we made every human possible, every humanly possible effort to get down and, and try to help him. Uh, uh, just, uh, it's one of those things that it never leaves your mind. Every time you get off fire, you're thinking about that. The uh, next big event for me in the Independent was uh, I became a member of the Board of Directors in 1976, and I've been on the board ever since then. Became a lieutenant in 77 or 78, and uh, that was the beginning of my fire officer career. And uh, it's been a, a, an exciting time. A lot of changes occurred. And in 1991, I became fire chief. So um, let's see, that makes me uh, getting close to uh, 20 years of service as fire chief. So I really enjoy it. Uh, got a few years left, I hope. Uh, other big events that occurred over the years, uh, it was kind of interesting. Uh, I, I mentioned Lewis Alban earlier. Uh, Lewis and myself was out riding in our 1936 Mac. It was the first Mac fire truck ever uh, uh, sold in West Virginia. Independent was very proud of it. And we was basically taking our last ride on it because it was uh, uh, being sold to a museum, I believe, up in Ma up in Boston, and uh, we were riding along. We heard a fire dispatched out on Country Club Road, and where were we? About a half mile away, and uh, we pulled that old Mac up and and started fighting fire to the the big newer fire trucks got there. So that was a, a great experience, uh, the last ride, the last run on it. So it was shortly after that it was transported out of Charlestown. Over the years, we've uh, I've seen lots of fire. I've seen a lot of residential fires, I've seen a lot of uh, vehicle fires, field fires, and woods fires. Three fires uh, have stuck out in my mind as being the most significant fires that I've seen in the Charlestown Ranson area. Uh, the first one I mentioned previously was a Miller Chemical, and as I said, that's forever. Uh, two more big events that happened was uh, we had a fire out on Harry Shirley Road. It was the old uh, uh, copper tone plant that was turned into a uh, building was manufacturing transformers. About noontime, the whole operation shut down and they all went to lunch. Uh, before they got back, we had a major fire there. And it was uh, uh, fire companies from all over the area we had in assisting us. And 
Yeah, we were there watching. I was uh, the commander at the time, incident command, and uh, and I seen the smoke change. I had a crew inside, and uh, I, I seen the smoke change, and I said something's happening here, and I evacuated everybody. And uh, uh, Donald Longer, being hooked as most of us know him, uh, was in there, and he come out. I told him to abandon hose and everything. They just dropped everything and ran. They come running out, crawling out the door. And as they come out the door, fire exploded behind them. The whole building was erupted in flames. Uh, that, that sticks in my mind. It makes me uh, constantly think about firefighter safety because uh, in that particular case, if I wasn't watching very closely, uh, we would have probably lost a couple of firefighters in there the way the fire erupted. The, uh, the, uh, the biggest event that I was ever uh, incident commander on was a tire fire uh, out in uh, Inwood. Uh, I was in some commander there, and uh, it was kind of strange because one week before I'd met with uh, Chief uh, Keysucker from Berkeley County, and we had done some pre-planning on this this fire, this facility, just to be ready in case there was a fire there. And uh, one week later, we're out there for three days, and uh, the pre-planning really paid off. It shows the value of looking at what you're protecting and whatever. So that was an interesting. So that, there are the three significant fires. We had lots of others, and uh, there's always stories to go with every one of them. Uh, but I, I, I'm not a very good storyteller, so we'll just go on from there. A uh, couple of things. That, another thing that really sticks out in my mind was uh, how uh, some of the uh, other chiefs helped me grow in the, in the service. Uh, uh, Lee Morgan from Shepherdstown, what a great guy. Very, very dedicated to the community. Uh, he gave 100% all the time and uh, he gave me a lot of advice over the years. And one of the things that really sticks out in my mind was uh, we were on a fire with uh, Citizens Fire Company and uh, Buck Willingham was chief. And uh, I was a new lieutenant and I, I come running into the scene. I'm one of the last units there. And I pull up to the scene driving a tanker and I see all this smoke. So I'm, I decide I'm gonna call for fire trucks. I'm gonna get more fire trucks here, even though I wasn't in charge. This is before we had the incident command as we know it today, but we still had a command structure. Yeah, it was kind of strange because basically what I was seeing was the end of the fire. The fire was out and this was a little residual smoke and whatever. Uh, never forget Buck Willingham coming out and saying, come with me. And uh, we walked up around the front of the truck where no one was and put his arm around the, my shoulder and said, son, we have a command organization here. Uh, you just got a little overzealous. You got to stop and think everything you're doing. Make sure you have all your facts before you go any further. And uh, this, this taught me a big lesson. And uh, this was basically the beginning of my incident command career and uh, learning about incident command and NIMS as we know it today. And uh, it was a great experience. <coughs> yeah. One of the uh, highlights of my career uh, was on an ambulance call back uh, all many years ago and uh, it was an early one morning and uh, I got up and went got on the ambulance. Colleen Warner was on the ambulance with me and I'll never forget this. It was a, uh, for a uh, maternity call, a pregnant woman getting ready to have a baby. We get down to the house on Mornington Avenue and, and she's saying, I'm going to have this baby now. It's going to happen now, and Colleen and her nice calm voice says, no, no, we're going to get you to the hospital. We're only two minutes away. So we load her on the cot, and, uh, and uh, I jump up in the driver's seat and start to hit the street. And We get one block, and Colleen says, stop the ambulance and get back here. And we stop right in the middle of uh, George Street, lights on. I, I yelled across the radio to get me a driver so we could go on to the hospital. And uh, we delivered that baby right there on George. It was just such a magnificent event. I'll never forget that. It was uh, one of those heartwarming things. That, uh, it's, it's something all EMTs want to do one time. They won't admit it, but they all want to do it one time. But they also want it to be a normal birth uh, and everything to go well, and that did. That was the first of three for me, and quite an exciting experience. It really helps to offset the, uh, the other things we see, the life and the death. So it was great, and, uh, and that'll be in fine detail in my mind. All right. Uh, trying to think where to go. Let me, let me be sure. It's recording.
The, uh, the biggest changes I've seen over the years is in the, the equipment and the safety and equipment. Uh, back when I first came into the service, uh, in Charlestown even, we had uh, vehicles with open cabs. We had one that had no cab even over the driver and the officer, 1952 Mac. Great piece of equipment, a fun piece of equipment. I sure wish I had it today to drive around. And uh, uh, no seat belts or anything was even considered back then. Uh, with the vehicles, things have changed. Uh, uh, the next thing we did was we had a covered cab, but it was open in the back, so the uh, people were riding back there. And uh, uh, once again, no seat belts. They, they were just sitting there. They could at least put their air packs on. They got them off the tailboard. Tailboards historically have been very dangerous and people falling off them, so uh, they had to ride at least up in one of the seats. So that was a big change for us. Uh, it's evolved around so many things. Uh, today, the uh, new vehicles, they have uh, seat belts, they have warnings that will tell you exactly which person doesn't have their seat belt on. Big changes. And it's all in the name of safety. Uh, vehicles are even designed today so you can roll them over and the cab will stay intact unless it's a strange circumstance.